Launching the Antiquities Act of 1906, President Teddy Roosevelt created the nation's first national monument designation, Devil's Tower National Monument in Wyoming. The important purpose of this act was to preserve, for all Americans, significant pieces of the country's history. Ecology. Geology. And beauty. But unlike America's great national parks, size is not important for monuments. Historic sites and other units of the national park system Monuments are typically established by presidential proclamation, chosen as their personal memorials of the most special parts of this great country. However, occasionally these units of the park system are established by the direct action of Congress. Some are big, some are small. Some garner large budgets and staff, others next to none. And some eventually gain national park designation. America's treasures tell the story of the nation's past and present glory. America has been blessed with a spectacular coastline the Pacific Ocean coastline. A coastline where the tectonic forces of the Pacific and North American plates are colliding, producing one of the most dramatic coastlines in the world. A coastline with one of the great Mediterranean climates. A coastline with over 50 million inhabitants. The glory of America's Pacific coast might even start with Hawaii's developing volcanic coastline found in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. A coastline that is witness to fiery molten lava as it flows into the sea. Sun, sandy beaches, and the whole California lifestyle characterize Southern California's coastline. It is home to some of the greatest and busiest ports in the world. Then there is the Central California coast with the rugged cliffs and crashing waves of Big Sur. And of course, San Francisco's famously hilly landscape and vibrant estuaries filled with life. The Northern California coastline has some of the most photogenic beaches, wonder spots, and glorious sunsets found anywhere in the world. Oregon's coastal haystacks are one of the most recognizable scenic wonders in the world. Formed millions of years ago by lava flows, lava flows that created many of the Oregon coast's natural dramatic features, features that are ever shifting in appearance as light dances along Oregon's coasts. Rocky beaches, giant drift logs, 
pounding waves, and views of offshore islands characterize Washington seashore, as well as the sandy beaches and forested islands of Puget Sound. And then there's the fjords of the southern panhandle of Alaska's coast. Spectacular fjords beyond belief. The American people, through its park system, have set aside some of the most alluring and beautiful places along its Pacific coastal waters. National parks and monuments that include Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve, Redwood National and State Parks, and California Coastal National Monument. California Coastal National Monument is one of the newest and least known of the nation's monuments. It is located in many places along the entire coastline of California. This monument ensures the protection of many of the most spectacular and wild places along the Pacific shore, including islets, reefs, islands, tidal pools, bird sanctuaries, and rock outcroppings and formations. All along the entire 1,100 mile long California coastline. Conservative estimates show that the monument protects at least 20,000 important coastal features. The monument was created by President Bill Clinton on January 11, 2000, and later expanded by President Barack Obama. California Coastal National Monument is one of the most visited national monuments in California. Although people are usually not aware that they are in or viewing a national monument. Indeed, along its length, this protected spectacular interplay of land and sea is an experience that creates lasting connections between people and nature. To learn which parts of the coastline belong to the monument, the visitor will have to contact county or Bureau of Land Management Information Centers as sites are continuously being made more accessible. Redwood National and State Parks was signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson in 1968 and is one of California's crown jewels of its many ecosystems. Located along California's northern coast, Redwood National and State Parks protects the largest remaining stand of old growth redwood trees. Protects nearly half of the remaining redwoods on the planet. Redwoods that are some of the world's tallest trees. A World Heritage Site, the preserve is a spectacular network of national and state parks with dozens of soft paths letting the visitor walk among the soaring primordial redwoods. Redwoods which can soar over 350 feet above you. Trails that allow you to experience the beauty of sunlight shining through the mist and fog and soft paths that allow you to see a Roosevelt elk graze in grassy prairies. And finally, to witness the life-giving mist as it rises up from the ocean to nurture the giant redwoods.
The coastal redwood forests can trace their origins back to the time of the dinosaurs, when they were spread across many continents. However, their range today is narrowly confined to Northern California's Mediterranean climate. A climate that, along the coastal shoreline, meets the cooler Pacific Ocean. A combination that produces ample year-round fog. Fog, particularly during California's long, hot, dry summers, is critical to the survival of the fast-growing, water-needy redwoods. Tim Jordan is a park ranger who has been documenting the relationship between the redwoods and their shifting water supplies throughout the year. So the trees are drinking from the rain, from the runoff, and in the summer months when we have no precipitation, they really rely on the coastal fog we get out here. Um, so one of the functions of the redwoods tree, redwood tree's height is to grow into the fog layer that passes in um, from the ocean and they collect the moisture on their leaves. A little bit of that moisture is absorbed directly into the leaf itself, but a great majority of it is dripped back down to the forest floor, and they can actually get up to 30% of their water needs for the year just based on the fog alone. Redwoods are rather unique among cone-bearing evergreens in that not only do they reproduce by seed, but also by cloning. So when a coast redwood tree experiences stress in some form, it could be a fire, it could also be a flood or a drought, it could also be the actions of visitors to the park or park managers, um, you know, laying walkways or putting in fences, something that disturbs the tree. Um, and the tree will react to this by sprouting lots of shoots from dormant buds on the roots. Now, these dormant buds accumulate and they look like warts on the tree. They also are what's causing these swellings at the base of the tree. It looks like it's almost um, bumps or it's rising up at the base of the tree. Those are all the dormant buds that we call burls. And these burls, in times of stress, will start to send out new shoots. They eventually matured into larger trees and that's why we have these uh, distinct features in a redwood forest. So, in a redwood grove, each tree is genetically identical to all the other trees. In short, it is the same tree. A tree starting with the parent tree could now be four to 6,000 years old. But it is only in the few remaining old growth redwood forests, such as those in redwood national and state parks, that such phenomena as family circles and fire scars that are over 500 years old can be found. Well, in Northern California, a number of things are going on. Uh, one that probably is related to us more than anything else is redwood trees. You know, the redwood trees have been growing faster in the last couple decades than they have in their history. Some people think that it's because there's more carbon dioxide available and plants like carbon dioxide. Some people think it's because um, the warmer weather has caused us to have a longer growing season as well. You can't document a dramatic change in weather, but, but, it's, but it is significant. You know, there, it has definitely gotten warmer. Redwood trees, are the biggest trees in the world, are growing faster than they ever have before, especially the old big ones. Glaciers, one of the most powerful forces on the planet. What is a glacier? Glaciers are created when, over many years, snow compresses into large, thickened ice masses. What makes glaciers unique is their ability to move. Due to sheer mass, glaciers flow like very slow rivers. Some glaciers, like mountain glaciers, are as small as football fields, while others grow to massive dimensions. Presently, glaciers occupy about 10% of the world's total land area 
with most located in polar regions, Antarctica, Greenland, and the Canadian and Alaskan Arctic. In the United States, there is no better place to see glaciers and the results of their awesome power than Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve. President Calvin Coolidge proclaimed the area around Glacier Bay in Alaska's Panhandle a national monument on February 25, 1925. After subsequent enlargement, the monument was redesignated Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve in 1980. However, because of the park's remoteness, most people experience Alaska's glaciers as a result of Alaska cruises on board one of the many cruise ships that make the trip from the contiguous United States to the park and back. The first stop on the cruise is Ketchikan, Alaska. Ketchikan is known as Alaska's first city because it's the first major community cruise ships come to as they journey north. Located on an island, Ketchikan began as an Indian fishing camp. Visitors to Ketchikan will be intrigued by its rich native heritage, which includes the world's oldest collection of totem poles. Totem poles are part of the rich history and culture of the Haida, Tlingit, and Shishimian peoples all a part of Ketchikan's colorful history. Visitors will be captivated with both the scenic town itself and its natural surroundings, especially Misty Fjord's National Monument. Misty Fjord's National Monument is a monument and wilderness area administered by the U.S. Forest Service that was proclaimed a monument in 1978 by President Jimmy Carter. The monument is an excellent place to experience a temperate rainforest with its dominant Sitka spruce and lush understory. It is the place to see majestic bald eagles. And if lucky, one might even get a quick glimpse of a grizzly bear cub in this monument. Next stop for most visitors is Alaska's capital city of Juneau.
Here, one can get up close and personal with one of the best-known glaciers in the world, the Mendenhall Glacier. Leisurely marvel at beautiful Mendenhall, one of 38 glaciers flowing from the massive 1,500 square mile Juneau ice field. Walk along the edge of the glacier lake. Or down to the spectacular Nugget Creek Falls. Because of climate change, the Great Mendenhall Glacier is shrinking. From Juneau, the cruises head for one of the spectacular nearby fjords. Southeast of Juneau lies the narrow Tracy Arm Fjord a 26-mile waterway that delivers epic views of glacier-carved rock. Fjords are formed by giant glacier tongues that, through several ice ages, have shaped the landscape. A fjord is essentially a U-shaped undersea valley, always longer than it is wide and often surrounded by dramatic mountain scenery. One can only sit back and be awestruck by each turn of the ship. Along the way, you cruise past crashing waterfalls. sheer granite walls, snow-dusted peaks, and an occasional black bear. Then, there it is. The spectacular Sawyer Glacier. Gaze at the seals resting on the ice below. And if lucky, hear the thunderous crack as the glaciers calve and send house-sized chunks of ice plummeting into the waters of this awe-inspiring fjord. For people on other cruises, after their stop at Juneau, it's time to continue north to Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve. Covering 3.3 million acres of rugged mountains, dynamic glaciers, wild coastlines, and deep sheltered fjords, Glacier Bay National Park is a highlight of Alaska's Inside Passage and part of a 25 million acre World Heritage Site. The cruise can take you to any one of six spectacular glaciers. At some point during the nine hour journey, the ship will stop in front of one of the park's tidewater glaciers. What appears to be simply a wall of ice around 200 feet tall and a mile wide is actually the end of a tremendous river of ice, many miles long. But on certain days, the highlight of the trip is getting close to the stunning blue icebergs. Each one is unique 
and the color and size of these icebergs is one of the most beautiful sights in nature. The whole trip is a journey to remember for a lifetime.